Good morning. Welcome to Christ the King's Morning Prayer. This is February 2nd, 2023. It's the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple. The opening sentence is found on page 28. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. On page 12, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no help in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The antiphon for this, sun, or this day is on page 29. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O come, let us adore him. The Venite is on page 14. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O oh, come, come let us adore him. We'll now have the psalm and the New Testament reading. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 84. It can be found starting on page 379. How lovely are your dwellings, O Lord God of hosts. My spoke. Oh. Well, my soul has a desire and longing to enter into the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Indeed, the sparrow has found her house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Blessed is the one whose strength is in you, in whose heart are your ways who going through the valley of misery uses it for a well. Indeed, the early rains fill the pools with water. They will go from strength to strength and the Lord of God and the God of God shall be seen by them in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold, O God, our defender and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God and dwell in the tents 
than dwell in the tents of the ungodliness. For the Lord God is a light and defense. The Lord will give grace and honor, and no good thing shall he withhold from those who live a godly life. O Lord, God of hosts, blessed is the one who puts his trust in him. The New Testament reading today is from 1 Corinthians, starting with verse 35 and going to the end of the chapter. Let me just make sure. Yeah, the resurrection body. But some will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it as a body he has chosen and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there's one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind and the glory of the earthly is of another. There's one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for star differs from star in glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in a natural body. It is raised in a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven, as was the man of dust. So also are those who are of the dust, and as is the man of heaven. So also are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. Mystery and victory. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle this morning is the Nunc Dimittis, found on page 64. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. The Apostles' Creed, found on page 20. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let, let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. The collect for the feast for the presentation. Almighty and ever living God, we humbly pray that as your only begotten Son was this day presented in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so may we be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Colic for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you, sir, to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you. But remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we'll have a time for extemporaneous prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the love you show us. I thank you that uh, you're giving us some health answers for Rita and David. And I ask, Lord, that you would particularly be with our church planting team this morning. And tomorrow, as they are meeting, uh, Lord, may your Holy Spirit empower and enliven this meeting, and may they make wise decisions that your church might move forward and be glorified and grow. Lord, I thank you for your gift to us this day, but your biggest gift was your son, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that he sent to be with us. I ask that we be still long enough to hear the guidance of the Holy Spirit and that this diocese will continue to plant churches, small churches, perfect for ministering to small communities in rural areas. Lord, it's a big geographic place. Bishop Stephen has, again, he's on his travels still. And I ask that you keep him safe, keep him well. He has severe allergies. And Lord, I know that it's coming close to the spring and allergy season in many places. So Father, I ask that you keep him safe. You keep his team safe. I ask that today you keep Father Pete safe as he returns later today from his church planning conference. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you have poured over this diocese, over our bishop and over us as a congregation. And we, we thank you for 
the words of wisdom that you pour through Father Pete into our hearts, uh, especially last Sunday, that you remind us that every good gift is from you. Um, every good gift is from you, including the gift of faith. And we thank you for that, Lord. Um, keep us ever mindful of your presence in our lives. Remind us each day to take the time to be quiet and be with you and hear your nudges, your urgings, your guidance. Show us which way you would have us step. Um, remind us which people you would have us reach out to, people we know and mean to call or mean to send a note to and sometimes let busyness get in the way. Um, when we have thoughts that are not useful, not positive, remind us to blow them up, <laughs> to explode them, as Father Pete said, and get them out of the way, wipe the slate clean, and make ourselves ready to be used by you for your purposes. All these things we sincerely ask in your name. We'll conclude with the prayer of St. John Chrysostom, found on page 26. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.